Prost! This is a medicine that I made in just five days. Keep watching and find out how to make your own. Now before I get into this, it's probably worth mentioning a little bit about the history of the Merzen. In 1553 in Bavaria, beer could only be brewed between Michaelmas on the 29th of September and St George's Day on the 23rd of April. There was no brewing done at all during the summer. As such, the beers brewed towards the latter end of the brewing period would be higher in alcohol percentage, with more hops added to prevent spoilage and to last longer as it was lagered. Märzen, therefore, was brewed, as the name suggests, in March, right before the end of the brewing period. It is related to Oktoberfest in that it would have been the original beer served at an Oktoberfest. This takes us back to October the 12th, 1810, during the wedding of the Crown Prince Ludwig I of Bavaria, there is the uh, dapper chap, and Princess Theresa von sachsen hildburghausen Look at the matching. All of Munich would have been invited to this gigantic celebration, which took place on the fields outside of the city gates. They were named the Theresienwiese, Theresa's Meadow, after the princess. It was said that the prince enjoyed this affair to the point of wanting to repeat it. This was the initial birth of Oktoberfest. In 1811, a show was added to promote Bavarian agriculture. Then later, in 1813, the festival was cancelled due to the involvement of Bavaria in the Napoleonic Wars, after which the Oktoberfest grew from year to year to year. Originally, Manson would have been served at the Oktoberfest, as it was the only beer available and needing to be drunk at that time over the summer. It was a dark amber lager. However, this has been overtaken in popularity in 1841 with a lighter coloured lager, which eventually evolved into a fest beer that most people will know today. I'll be doing a video on a fest beer closer to Oktoberfest in celebration of it. What I'll be making is the original March beer, or a Märzen. Although, given that I'm brewing this in June, perhaps I should call it a Uniton. Now, let's go over the BJCP guidelines for a Märzen. We want moderate intensity aroma of German malt, typically rich, bready, somewhat toasty, with light bread crust notes. No hop aroma. Caramel, dry, biscuity or roasted malt aromas are inappropriate. Clean, elegant malt richness should be the primary aroma. Now this sounds like a job for primarily Munich malt, that bready, rich, malty flavour, and also as a nod to Munich, where the Oktoberfest would have been held. We also want some Pilsner backbone, most likely, and maybe a touch of Vienna. We don't want any crystal or roasty malts to prevent that caramel or dry biscuity roasted aroma. Flavour-wise, initial malt flavour often suggests sweetness, but finishes moderately dry to dry. Distinctive and complex maltiness often includes a bready or a toasty aspect. Hot bitterness is moderate, and the hot flavour is low to none. The aftertaste is malty, with the same elegant, rich malt flavours lingering. Noticeable caramel, biscuit or roasted flavours again are inappropriate. So we're saying we want malty, but not biscuity. We don't want caramelly, we want bready and toasty, and with barely any hop flavourings, but bitter enough that it doesn't taste sweet and cloying like we're drinking something like a juice. With such a malt profile, I'm thinking maybe a touch of melanoidin might be quite good. Now mouthfeel, medium body with a smooth creamy texture that often suggests a fuller mouthfeel, fully attenuated without a sweet or cloying impression, this suggests we want something with a final gravity around 1.10, 1.11 uh, for a medium body, fuller mouthfeel. Uh, I'm not a fan of going higher, it gets too sweet in my opinion. We might therefore want to mash that around a higher temperature, maybe around 67, to get some longer chain sugars that won't ferment out as clean to prevent us from having too of a watch of a watered down beer. And now I'll go over how I created this recipe in Brewfart. We'll select a Märzen for the guidelines and now attempt to find something within these using the malts that I currently have in mind. For the main base malt, we want something that's malty, bready, toasty, and that to me just screams Munich malt. So let's go for around three kilograms of Munich two malt as the base, and since we want German, let's stick with Weinen. For malty sweetness, let's go for some Pilsner. It'll help with lightening the beer as well. So let's stick with maybe around 1.7 kilograms of Pilsner malt. Now for a bit of graininess and maltiness, as well as colour, let's get a bit of Vienna malt in there. I think one kilogram of Vienna should be enough. Now lastly, Manson is traditionally sometimes made using a decoction match. I really can't be bothered with doing this, so I'm going to try and emulate this by throwing in 100 grams of melanoidin malt, which should stimulate this flavour profile. As for hops, let's go traditional, let's go noble, let's go German hops. Halleter and Mittelfrüh. 
I want it on the higher end of the IBU guidelines, so let's go for 45 grams of Halatawa Mikapu at 60 minutes for the bitterness. A small amount of 14 grams at 20 minutes remaining, just for a bit of hop aroma and flavour, but not so much that it's going to override the maltiness and be noticeable. Now given I'm feeling a slightly lazy uh, and without any real temperature control, I'm going to opt for a quake again. This time Lutra quake, as I did with the German pills video, the link will be in the description. Lutra ferments incredibly cleanly in my opinion. I know some people disagree with using quake personally, but this is my beer and to my taste, uh, and this works perfectly. It's clean, it's fast, and it's no fuss. Maybe instead I'll start calling this a pseudo net. Lastly, we'll select the water profile and input the water profile of the style I'd like to emulate. We'll click this magic wand and take a look. Water adjustments completed. Now we know we'll want to add these amounts to the mash water as it's heating up. Who said water adjustments are difficult? As always, the recipe will be on in the description below. And so, onto the brew day. We want to go for around 24 to 25 litres of mash water. I'm going to go on the higher end, slightly around 25 litres. I've prepared this the night before with a Camden tablet, just to allow any chlorine or chloramines to escape. Then I'm going to weigh out the salts and add them in. We're looking for 0.2 grams of calcium chloride, 0.1 grams of baking soda or bicarbonate of soda, 1.9 grams of table salt, 0.1 grams of chalk, and I don't have any magnesium chloride or slate lime, so that's not going to be going in. Finally, I'm going to set it to 73 and wait. The reason for 73 is that as my grain is colder than the water, it will bring the temperature down a few degrees to the 67 that I want to keep it at. We're also using 3 kilograms, or 51.7% of Viaman Munich 2 malt. One point seven kilos, or twenty nine point three percent, Viaman Pilsner malt. One kilo, or seventeen point two percent, Viaman Vienna malt. A hundred grams, or one point seven percent, Melanoidin. and I'm going to chuck in some oat husks just to prevent a stuck mash. These aren't fermentable and so can be added however. We'll be mashing in at 67C for 60 minutes, aiming for a pre-boil gravity of 1.052. 10 minutes later, the pump gets turned on. We'll be mashing at 67C for 60 minutes, aiming for a pre-boil gravity of 1.052. After 60 minutes, I raise the temperature to 79 degrees to mash out for 10 minutes and set the malt profile to prevent more sugars from being converted. We'll sparge with around 10 litres of sparge water. I don't have a hot liquor tank, so this is just ground water temperature. I'll put it outside to cool crash. You can see on the tilt graph the temperature going back down as I let the beer clarify somewhat. 
we've gone from an original gravity of 1.059 on our hydrometer to a final gravity of 1.011, which, according to the tilt, gives us an ABV of 6.3%. This is just within the PGSP guidelines, so that's a positive. I then did a close transfer to minimise how much oxygen the beer was actually in contact with. I then set it to force carb about 50 psi in my kegerator for about 18 hours. And what a final product. Now it's got a beautiful amber colour. It's bang on the guidelines, exactly as I wanted it. Really happy with that. It's got a good head, slightly off-white, good carbonation, nice white, off-white coloured foam on the head, and it looks very, very cool in the Stein. I'm very pleased with that. How come it's cloudy? Well, it's cloudy because it hasn't had enough time to condition. It's been made in five days. It has absolutely no effect on the taste. Um, it will just look a little bit non-clear, which is absolutely fine. It's just a bit of the particulate matters that haven't fully settled all the way down to the bottom. Given enough conditioning in the keg, this should, t this should all go down and become absolutely clear. I've rushed it somewhat, and that's probably the only reason why. Lack of cold crashing facilities is probably the also the other reason. Now, let's go with the aroma. Oh. Toasted bread, but toasted I almost want to say toasted, malty, almost like a black rye, sort of brown bread, uh, is what I'd call it. Very toasted, yeah, to toasted uh, rye bread, so something like that. Very sort of nice aromas from that. Really good maltiness. I'm not getting any caramel, absolutely no caramel in this whatsoever. I'm not getting any hops. Um, I'm getting almost like a bitter smell. If that explains anything, but I'm not really getting any hops from this. Really lovely. Um, from BJCP, this sounds pretty much right on the money, which I'm quite happy about. Flavour-wise, oh man. Oh. If you close your eyes, you can almost imagine the umpa music right around you. Um, obviously, not quite so around here. Um, it's not sweet, it's not cloyingly sweet, um, but there is an element of something there. Uh, it's not super dry either. It's got a really nice body to it. Um, it definitely feels like you know something is going down as you're drinking. It's very good, uh, very malty. Um, and it's, it's not a one dimension. I'm getting the Munich really strong there with the uh, toasty aspect of it, the breadiness. I'm getting the Pilsner slightly on the aftertaste, on the back of the throat almost. I'm getting a bit of the Pilsner sort of honey uh, maltiness from that effect. And then there's that Vienna with the graininess. There's something that, I, the only way that I could describe this would just be pure graininess, and that's about it. Um, not hoppy. I would not say hoppy in the slightest. Nah. Um, not really noble hoppy. Bitter though, and I will give it that. There is the bitterness. And I would wonder if that's also the melanoidin um, that's helping with that bitterness and providing that little kick of the malt there. I mean, realistically, I just want to keep drinking this, really. What's scary is that this was 6.3%. Now, you know, this just looks like a standard Stein, nice little beer, 6.3. That's gonna kick your ass hopper. Now I will say, given the 6.3% and given the uh, guidelines of, you know, 5.89 to 6.3% being the recommended style for this, I do understand why the Oktoberfest opted for a lighter fest beer or something uh, as its beer of choice. This is quaffable, this is far too quaffable. And if you're having a lot of beers with your friends from an early start, you wanna pace yourself and you definitely don't wanna be having, you know, six, seven, eight steins of these. And I mean, I'm, this is a half a liter stein. This isn't the full proper 
one litre stein, two pint stein that normally they use. Um, and so because of that reason, I completely understand wanting something that's just that tad lighter so that you're not completely on the floor singing Ein Trosen before, you know, the night is through. Um, but with that, I can see my keg emptying very quickly given this beer. Now, next up, I'm going to be brewing the Apartment Brewers Kolsch recipe, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments any other styles that you want me to attempt, or videos that you would like for me to do. Um, perhaps a beer review, or trying beers from different countries, or maybe trying a recipe of your own. Um, if that's what you want, let me know, and I will get back to you with that. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Prost!